Hello and welcome to another episode of Industry Spotlight, a series where I take a detailed look into a certain individual or company from the industry. I have a look into their careers, their achievements and how they've impacted the industry. In this episode I'll be looking into an individual who many believe to be the most influential person in the history of anime and manga, so much so that he's picked up the title of God of Manga and has been the subject of many books and documentaries. Osama Tezuka lived an interesting life full of achievement and influence. We'll be taking a look into his career in this video. Of course, it would be impossible to even name all of his works in one video, so I'll have to pick and choose works that I feel are the most interesting and pivotal in his career. Osamu Tezuka was born in November of 1928. He was born into a family of high achievers, doctors, lawyers. Tezuka's family had set the bar very high. Despite this, his family fully supported him when he grew a keen interest in art at a very young age. He shared an interest in manga with his father. The young Tezuka had an access to his father's large collection of manga. His father was instrumental in Tezuka's interest into manga, not only by his own manga collection, but through the introduction of animators such as Walt Disney and Max Fleischer. Tezuka took great inspiration from these animators, and you can see it in his later works. While at school, Tezuka would draw manga for his classmates. Even at the age of 8 or 9, he was gaining popularity for his drawing. Though drawing was not his only passion, Tezuka had many hobbies, one of which was bug collecting. Through this hobby he chose his pen name, Usamushi, as it was a favourite bug of his and tied into his own name. Tezuka was very smart. Despite his love for drawing, he knew it would be best to study for a more traditional job as well, so when he turned 17 he entered university to study medicine. He would continue to study medicine for 7 years, even while studying he would create manga, and he published his first manga at age 17, named Diary of Machan. Tezuka's dedication and work ethic is what made his early career such a success. Despite the large time studying medicine takes, he still put time and effort into creating manga. From this point onwards, he would start to gain more and more popularity in the manga world. A year later in 1947, he created a manga that would be a massive turning point in his career. He published his new manga, New Treasure Island. Not related to the classic novel, but shared a similar success. Instantly his manga became a success and quickly sold over 400,000 copies, which for the time was really, really good. All throughout his studies he would continue to publish manga. In 1951 he published a very important manga series named Ambassador Atom. It was not the manga itself, but one of the side characters that really boosted Tezuka's career. A side character named Astro Boy. Ambassador Atom would run for about a year and then end, but Astro Boy would begin shortly after. In 1952, Tezuka's most well-known work would start. Astro Boy was another success. People loved the character and the story. It sold really well initially, and then kept on selling. Today it sold well over 100 million copies. The manga even ran for over a decade. This raised Tezuka's status massively. He had no idea how important this manga would be. In fact, it's extremely hard to put into words just how important Astro Boy is. It went on to spark decades upon decades of sci-fi anime and manga. And not only just sci-fi, you can't show any figures or numbers, but Astro Boy could well be responsible for every single anime series and movie to follow. Without the start of this manga, who knows if post-war Japan could have had another spark of genius like this. Tezuka was becoming such a worldwide name that in 1965, one of the world's greatest filmmakers, Stanley Kubrick, asked Tezuka to work on his 1968 movie, 2001 A Space Odyssey. But Tezuka had to decline because he couldn't afford to move out of Japan. Throughout the 60s, Tezuka continued to create manga. He also started to master his drawing skills. He had always been a brilliant storyteller, but now his skills as an artist were blossoming too. In 1963, an anime adaptation of Astro Boy by Mushi Productions would start. Continuing from the success of the manga, the anime got high numbers and even made its way to the west. Before Astro Boy, anime on TV was very rare, but Tezuka's show sparked the growth of anime in the 60s. One of Tezuka's other many successful anime from the 60s was Kimba the White Lion. NBC initially came to Mushi Productions after Astro Boy's success. They wanted to fund a new colour anime TV series. At the time, coloured animation was quite expensive and Mushi Productions didn't have the capability at their current studio. NBC funded the studio upgrade and Mushi Productions went on to create Kimba the White Lion. The show launched to great success and completed its 52 episode run. NBC then released a redubbed version in America where it met similar success. In fact, it was so successful in the West that Disney went on to create a suspiciously similar film named Lion King some years later. Tezuka was not happy with the changes NBC made to the first season of Kimba the White Lion, so he went on to create the whole second season of the show before showing it to them. It aired in Japan, but NBC refused to buy the second season. Along with single-handedly kicking off TV anime and creating an unmentionable amount of new manga, Tezuka was still working on new projects. Throughout the 60s he made a number of experimental animated films. He made these at a rate of one every few years, and they won many awards. 
After many years in production, in 1966 the Astro Boy TV series finished airing, followed closely in 1968 when the Astro Boy manga came to an end. Though this was not the end for the Astro Boy franchise, it was a massive opportunity for Tezuka to start on new projects. His next project would be a new TV series called Princess Knight. Tezuka hoped NBC would bring the series over to the West, but due to the character wearing the opposite gender's clothes, NBC didn't think the American audience would accept it, so they never picked up the series at all, though it did complete a successful run on Japanese television. After a company change where Mushi Productions moved their offices and a big change in the industry's demographic, Tezuka decided he would leave Mushi Productions, and he would start his own studio, Tezuka Productions, to handle his anime work. Though he would not stop working with Mushi Productions, in fact a year later in 1969 they made their most ambitious project yet, named A Thousand and One Nights. This would be a massive collaboration between the two studios, with lots of people working on the project. During the production, Tezuka reportedly worked with two hours of sleep a night, not to mention all while his wife was pregnant. The movie was released in June of 1969, on the same day his daughter was born. The film was a success at the box office. Coming into the start of the 70s, Mushi Productions had folded. Due to this and other personal issues, Tezuka entered a period people call his dark period. Tezuka started to make darker, more serious manga. They were a world away from his previous light-hearted shonen manga. Works such as The Book of Human Insects in 1970 and Ayako in 1972 show just how dark his work became. Tezuka himself admits that he isn't as fond of his work from this period, though it didn't last too long as in 1973 he created yet another massive hit with Blackjack. This was not something that was planned, but just something that happened for a series of random events. Regardless, it went on to run for a very successful decade. In 1977, a company by the name of Kodansha approached Tezuka with an offer to publish his complete works. Many of Tezuka's manga had been lost or was unavailable to read, so Kodansha wanted to reprint everything in one place. 400 volumes of manga were published into this and Tezuka spent a huge amount of time redrawing lots of the damaged volumes. Tezuka would then join Toei Animation to work on new anime projects. A plan was put together to recreate Astro Boy in colour, but due to Mushi Productions folding, the legal rights to Astro Boy would take too long to sort out, so in 1977 he made Jetter Mars. It consisted of retellings of old Astro Boy stories, though for Tezuka it just wasn't Astro Boy and he stopped after 27 episodes. Throughout the next years Tezuka would not slow down, he continued to create new anime and manga series. In 1981 Tezuka regained the rights to Astro Boy and created the 52 episode fully coloured series. Although he wasn't as involved in the project as the original, Tezuka's work was making its way around the world. They were gaining massive popularity in places like America and China so much so that he would start making visits to animation conventions and festivals in these countries, meeting with fans and other animators. During the mid-80s, Tezuka delved back into the world of experimental films. In 1984, he created a very successful film named Jumping. While making these films, he would continue to travel and immerse himself in the world of animation. He travelled all over the world meeting animators from various countries. But then Tezuka was unexpectedly hospitalised for two months with gallstones. As soon as he could get out of the hospital and start working again, he did. All of his current projects were put back into action and he began working on even more projects. He started working more and more on experimental films that would become very popular overseas. In 1988 he was hospitalised again with stomach problems and had to receive surgery. He was released from hospital and jumped straight back into work, although his health was deteriorating. He never took his foot off the pedal and continued to release his work. He then travelled to Shanghai for another animation fest, but on his return he was hospitalised yet again and had to receive even more surgery. Even while in hospital he never stopped working. He had three separate manga series in production and would have assistants come to his hospital bed for instructions. Unfortunately Osamu Tezuka didn't make it out of hospital. He died on February 9th 1989 of stomach cancer. He was 60 years old. Even at the very end he showed outstanding work ethic and dedication as his last words to his family were, I'm begging you, let me work. A museum dedicated to his work was opened in his hometown. Stamps were issued in memory of him, and countless animators and manga artists would pay respect to him in their work. Osamu Tezuka is held as the god of manga not only because of his unbelievable library of work, but because of his attitude and passion towards his work. It seemed that nothing could stop Tezuka from working. Even in his more troubled and financially unstable years, he continued to put every piece of strength and effort into his work. He was an incredible man who lived such an inspirational life. Despite only living 60 years, he impacted anime and manga more than any other individual, and it's all down to the love and effort he put into his work. I hope you can come out of this with the knowledge and inspiration to live your life with as much passion and dedication as Osamu Tezuka did. Thank you for watching the video.